Hey Robot Makers, do you want to add a display and a rotary encoder to your projects to create a rotary menu display? Then watch this video. So what we want to create is a little menu system. Turning the encoder left and right will move the display selector up and down the list and if we press the button it will select the program that we've currently got listed and then run that program. So let's take a look at what we need. So obviously a Raspberry Pi Pico, a rotary encoder, I'm using the SSD 1306 OLE display. Um, you can use other displays, this is just the one I'm familiar with. A couple of DuPont cables and I'm using two breadboards there just to hold everything in place. So wiring up is quite straightforward. The display uses I squared C so we just need to wire up the ground, the voltage, the data and the clock to the Raspberry Pi Pico and the data is on pin 0, the clock is on pin 1 and the voltage goes to the 3.3 voltage out on the Pico. And then for the rotary encoder it's the button pin the direction step and there is two grounds as well so they're going to pin 16 17 18 and the ground that's in between those so let's have a look how this display is going to work so the display itself is made up of 64 pixels by 128 pixels wide and that means that if the line height of the text is about 10 pixels we've got about six lines to play with the total number of lines there is a variable we're going to store six in that and that can change if we have a different size display the width is 128 the height is 64 and then the line height is the 10 pixels per line so next up there's a rectangle function that we can use within the frame buffer function and it starts at the top left with 0, 0 as the x and y and then there's two other parameters we need the width and the height and then finally the color which on our case is either black or white 0 or 1 and we're going to use that filled rectangle to actually highlight the line that is the current selection so on this presentation here you can see line 1 is the currently selected item that's got the highlight and it has the little chevron little arrow next to it as well so the variables that we've looked at before we've also got the highlight which is set to 1 and that's line number one. So it's gonna be one of six lines in our case. So next up, if we were to display more than six items on our list, what we need to do is kind of have a window that we can move around. I'm calling the, uh, the thing that's going to point to the top of that window is going to be our shift and it's the shift from the very top of the list and the entire list itself is called the menu the currently selected list is called the short list and what we're going to do is just adjust what is in the short list based on the shift value so it's quite a simple function that we can create to do that so if we want to get a list of files that are currently on our raspberry pi pico we can use the os list directory function and that will return a list of all the files in the current working directory which is the root by default and we want to just filter out anything that's just a python file so that's actually very simple to do we can just grab that file files list from the OS list directory and then for each file in that files list because it's a dictionary we can say if that file ends with .py and then append that to, to another dictionary that we're calling menu and that menu will be the full list of all the files that we want to be able to run from our menu system. So how do we actually run a python file? Well this is quite simple as well we just use the exec function so if we say exec open file name dot read it will actually open up that file and then execute the contents of that file. Once it's finished executing the contents of that file, it will actually return back to the calling function. That's gonna be our menu. Once we've launched something, it'll run that program. And if that program hasn't got kind of an infinite loop in it, it will return back to our menu system. So that's quite a useful way of uh, being able to manage which programs we want to run. So previously on another video, we looked at the SSD 1306 display. We're actually gonna pinch that entire code and just load it into Visual Studio. Uh, and then we're gonna load that onto the Raspberry Pi P as well so it's got that as a library function it can call and we're also going to take the code that we built for the rotary encoder so over on my desk there i've got a number of files actually load onto this raspberry pi pico we've got um, test files one to five there is the library file for the ssd 1306 and there is also the rotary encoder program itself so as i turn this knob let me just uh, get there we should be able to see that the menu item there moves down and if I click on one of these, if I select test one and I press the button, we can see there it says launching test one and test one simply just displays the text test one. So we can see that that's worked. And then we can also see that it's just returned back to the menu program. So if I scroll further down, watch the very top item there, which is rotary display.py. That's gonna scroll off the top as I scroll to the very next item on the list there. So I'm now on test five. And then as I scroll back up, I'm turning the menu item back there. We shall see that we then get that rotary.py back on the top list there. So if you enjoyed this video, why not consider subscribing to the channel? Uh, you can also give me a like if you like the video. You can comment. That also helps with the algorithm. And um, if you hit the bell, you get notified next time I do a video. 
You can also check out smartfun.com, which is a website that I host uh, full of tutorials about small robots. Uh, there is guides, there is code, there is videos, um, and there's a Smars learning platform as well, which shows you how to get started with Python, how to get started with robotics, and there's two tutorials on how to build robots and how to build a quad robot as well. I do go live um, every Sunday at 7 p.m. British Summer Time or Greenwich Mean Time, whichever we're currently in in the UK, and the, the different time zones are displayed on the screen there. So the Americas and Canada on the left, we have the European zone in the middle, and we have uh, China and Australia on the right-hand side. If you want to help out the channel, you can always go to buymeacoffee.com slash kevinmaclear and uh, buy me a coffee which will help pay for putting this show together and keep it running for another year. I do have uh, three levels of membership that you might be interested in. There is a bronze, silver and gold and um, you can choose which suits you best there if you want to help support the show. So I hope you found this video really useful and you can create your own little menu displays now with a rotary encoder and add them to your robots. A uh, self-populating menu depending on which programs you've got available on your Raspberry Pi Pico. So I'll see you next time.